Good morning, Peace Tower Church. This is uh, Pastor Jimmy uh, joining you on a devotional uh, today, the Friday devotional. I hope you're doing well. We're looking forward to see you uh, this Sunday. Uh, this Sunday we have a uh, our uh, 10 a.m. service, and uh, please make sure to register online. Pastor David will be continuing uh, his uh, preaching his me- message on one of our main core value, which is worship. So uh, you don't want to miss that. It's going to be great. I hope uh, you're uh, enjoying a, a good, um, a good, a good weekend. Really, uh, pr- I pray that uh, the Lord is uh, is with you as you as you spend time with friends and family. Yesterday was uh, Thanksgiving in the U.S. And uh, today is Black Friday, and so um, I, uh, yeah, so I want to start uh, today on this, uh, really continue, not start, uh, the subject of freedom in Christ. So freedom in Christ, uh, I mentioned, I was talking about it really two weeks ago, and uh, today is part two, but the importance of embracing uh, what the Lord has done for us and uh, this freedom that has been made available to uh, the believers. Uh, we, as believers in Christ, uh, there is a, um, a new life that has been uh, made available through Christ. And if we're not intentional uh, and if, we're not, if we don't renew our mind uh, and, and walking into this um, this newness, this new creation that we are, uh, we are going to fall into the same old patterns. We are going to be uh, the same way we were before meeting Christ. And so I believe that the Lord Jesus Christ is calling us into new levels of freedom, new levels of experiencing uh, purpose in Him, new levels of walking hand in hand uh, with the Holy Spirit and really experiencing um, a life that is full of joy, full of peace, and full of purpose. I just want to read here in Romans chapter 6, uh, verse 1 to 4. You know, one of the characteristics of uh, freedom in Christ is the main uh, uh, area of freedom is freedom from sin. We have been set free by the Lord Jesus Christ from the yoke of bondage, from sin that had a a hold on us. And, uh, and we must understand that we are no longer uh, enslaved by the power of sin. Sin has no more uh, a sting, uh, you know, and, and we, we can't, we can no longer be uh, under that bondage. And so Romans chapter 6, verse 1 to 4 says this. And I'm going to read it in, uh, maybe our, yeah, I'm going to read it in the New King James Version. It says, what shall we say then? Shall we continue in sin that grace may abound? Certainly not. How shall we who died to sin live any longer in it? Or do you not know that as many of us were baptized into Christ Jesus, were baptized into his death? Therefore, we were buried with him through baptism into death, that just as Christ was raised from the dead by the glory of the Father, even so, we also should walk in newness of life. Hallelujah. In newness of life. That's the invitation. And so, uh, we must understand that we have been uh, given a new life. Our spirit has been made alive. And so, uh, our body, our physical body, is yet to be redeemed. Uh, However, spiritually, we have been awakened. Spiritually, we have been made alive in Christ. And our mind, so the flesh, our mind, soul, body, must align with this new uh, nature. You know, in 2 Corinthians 5.17, it says that if any man is in Christ, he is a new creation. Old things have passed away. Behold, all things have become new. All things have become new. And so we need to learn that in Christ, we are 
holy, sanctified, set apart uh, for God. But we need to learn to live into the newness of life. And so uh, that's why one of the key way to do this is to renew our mind. We have to renew the way we think. We have to uh, align our perspective with God's perspective. In Romans 12, 3, as it says that we must renew our mind. I'm going to read it actually here for you. It says, and do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of the mind of your mind, that you may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. And uh, so, in other words, we must learn to think in accordance to our new nature in Christ. We must learn to uh, have a different perspective, a godly perspective. That's why the Word of God is so important, because it teaches us how to think differently and how to think in a way uh, that honors the Holy Spirit, that honors God, that honors the Father. That, that's why we forgive when we have been betrayed. Yeah, that's why we make the decision to forgive when people have uh, hurt us. That's why we love and have compassion to even people who are seemingly against us. That's that's just what we do. Uh, that's why we, we we serve one another in humility, in love. And that's why we pursue peace and unity. Uh, you know, blessed are the peacemakers, for they shall be called sons of God. You know, we must understand that there is a new way, a new life that requires us to think differently, that requires us to renew our mind. It's the mind of Christ. It's the mind of the kingdom of God. And so here is, here is what we need to learn. So the question is, if we are free from sin, why is it so difficult to change sometimes why is it so difficult to abide in this newness of life so here is the answer we just read in romans chapter 6 that in verse 2 it says certainly not how shall we who died to sin live any longer in it there is the key we must embrace death to sin yes we must renew our mind and embrace death to sin and learn to let go. As long as we give importance to self, as long as we give importance to, uh, to the satisfaction of self, if that is number one, because that is what our sinful behavior does. Uh, that is the result of a sinful behavior, is the result of when we say it's about me, it's about me uh, enjoying the pleasures of the world, it's about me finding satisfaction. But as long as we have that mindset, we're, no, we're not in alignment with God. We're not in alignment with the Spirit of Christ who lives in us. And we are not fully dead to sin. We have not let go of the old man, see? We have not let go of the things that were holding us back. And so what it means is we must learn to die so that we might live in Christ. We must learn to let go so that we might become all that Christ intended us to be, so that we may receive the fullness of God's freedom in Christ. And so we must have a radical mindset. We can't have both. We can't have both. So the measure by which you choose to die to sin will be proportional to the measure of freedom that you will have access to because you cannot have both. We can't. And so it is, it is a daily uh, decision. It is a daily reminder. Remember Jesus said that if, if you want to follow him, if anyone wants to follow me, he must do what? Deny himself. Pick up his cross. Daily, deny himself. Pick up his cross and follow me. And so do you remember the people of Israel that uh, uh, God had delivered them from the bondage of Egypt? 
And uh, he took them to the promised land using Moses as his servant, as his chosen prophet to lead the people of Israel. And he led them through the desert. And now, during that time, it, it didn't take very long for the people of Israel to start complaining. It didn't take them long to start uh, complaining. And God gave them manna. So they were complaining about food. They were complaining about uh, being thirsty and hungry. And God gave them food. And God gave them uh, 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 water to drink. And But they continued to complain. And to the point where they were missing Egypt. To the point where they made this 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 these comments that oh we wish how how much we wish we were I'm paraphrasing but how much we wish we would still be in Egypt how can you miss a season of bondage that's what the old man does that's what happens when you have not when we have not renewed our minds you see their minds was not their mind were not renewed they were still they were free from bondage, but in their mind, they were still yoked. They were still in, enslaved uh, in their minds. They refused to embrace the freedom that God had given them. They refused to embrace the journey and the destination uh, where God was taking them. That's exactly what happened to us when we are born again, but we are not embracing the new man but still holding on, holding on to the old man. There's an interesting illustration. I was thinking about that. I was thinking how when I learned to drive manual, I wonder how many people here uh, have their first driving experience learning to drive a car was on a, on a shift uh, manual, manual car. But that was me in Burundi in Africa. And I learned on this, um, the instructor was using his own car, which was a, a Biddle, a Volkswagen Biddle from, I think, the 70s. I don't remember, but uh, I learned to, to drive in the 90s. So the car was old, but it was manual. And uh, and uh, it wasn't long until he took me in the busy street of Bujumbura, which uh, is quite crazy because I was, I was thinking, man, he's... He's, I guess he doesn't care about his car very much. <laughs> but uh, I learned by fire. If you drive in Africa, you would know. It's pretty crazy. But anyways, um, when you drive a manual, uh, you have to press the clutch. You press the clutch pedal. You change the gear. And then you accelerate. And so you can't, in order to accelerate, you have to release the clutch. You have to release the clutch. And as you release the clutch, you accelerate and the car moves forward. So you see the illustration here. I was just thinking about how much it's the same with our, uh, yes, Ginger is commenting very crazy driving in Bojumbura. It is crazy. Uh, but how much is the same with how we juggle our Christian life? And oftentimes we keep our foot on the clutch and we're holding on we're holding on on the clutch and the old men and the old behaviors and all sinful behaviors and the things that are holding us back but the car is not moving and it's not until you let go of the pedal it's not until you die to sin it's not until you release the pedal the the clutch that you can accelerate and move forward. And let me tell you, the Lord Jesus Christ is calling you this morning and I to move forward. Yes, to move forward. And for that, we need to learn to let go. We need to learn that um, we are pilgrims here on earth. Yes, and we are on a journey. And we need to embrace the fullness of the freedom in Christ here on earth to fulfill the will of God here. And also remember that one day we will meet the bridegroom. On that fateful day, we shall see him. And that's why it matters what we do today. And, if, uh, and some people are dealing with addictions. Here is what you can do. Begin to take steps towards freedom. There are programs that are available, even here at Peace Tower Church, that can help you deal with addictions, such as sexual addictions. 
And you need, those are deeper issues that were, your brain needs to be rewired. And you need help from a community of believers, of people that will love on you and help you with a step-by-step program. We have seven pillars for men starting in January. Uh, Vince and Al are doing a great job at offering these programs. And I'm telling you, the best thing you can do to yourself is begin this journey of releasing the clutch pedal and hitting the accelerator because you want to move forward and embrace the freedom you have in Christ. So in Romans uh, chapter 6, I'm just going to continue on what we were reading, but verse 8. So it says in verse 8, Romans chapter 6, verse 8, I'll close with that. It says, Now if we died with Christ, we believe that we shall also live with Him, knowing that Christ, having been raised from the dead, dies no more. Death no longer has dominion over him. Hallelujah. For the death that he died, he died to sin once for all. But the life that he lives, he lives to God. Likewise, you also reckon yourselves to be dead indeed to sin, but alive to God in Christ Jesus our Lord. Hallelujah. You see that? Verse 11. Likewise, you also reckon yourselves to be dead. Or in other words, consider yourselves to be dead indeed to sin, but alive to God in Christ Jesus, our Lord. Hallelujah. And so we are learning to let go. Yes, it doesn't mean we're perfect. We're not perfect. But there are decisions we must make. There's a radical decision that we are to make today to let go of the old man. And it counts for here on earth. But most importantly, it will count when we meet the Lord Jesus Christ. So God bless you. I hope you're doing great. And uh, we're uh, hoping, uh, looking forward to see you uh, this Sunday. Have a wonderful weekend. May God bless you as you embark in this journey of freedom in Christ. In Jesus' name, amen.